Welcome to another edition of Journey of Hope. Stories of people who share their journey. Their journey seeking wholeness and happiness and health. Our special guests today are from Redlands, California. Wendy and Abby, two ambassadors for Jesus. They've got a thrilling story to share. So good to have you here, Wendy and Abby, and we're going to learn about the journey that you've been on. But why don't we start off with you, Wendy, and tell us where you're from. Originally, I'm from Minnesota, Okay. but um, we've made our home in Redlands for the last, I've been here almost 25 years, I think. Okay. Yeah. And you've been associated with Loma Linda. You went to school here. And I did. Graduated with what? I graduated from the School of Physical Therapy, and um, and then I've had you know several different jobs since then. But currently, I'm working at Loma Linda again in inpatient rehab. Inpatient rehab. Mm -hmm. And Wendy, tell us a little bit. Uh, Abby, tell us a little bit about you. You're how old? I'm 11 years old. And you're in the, what grade? I'm in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Now, tell us what you have. Um, I have a form of muscular dystrophy. It's called Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. But there's actually 43 different types of it, or of muscular dystrophy. 43 different kinds. I didn't realize that. So, I want to find out. When did, when did we find out that you had this? And we'll talk to mom here. And <laughs> Wendy, I knew you before you, you know, right after yeah. you got married. Yeah. And actually before you got married. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us, you, you got married, and you and Joel, everything's going fine. Then yeah. you have this long expected, lovely little girl that's born. And tell us what happened. Um, well, you know, I had a pretty normal pregnancy as far as pregnancies go. Um, and she was born right on time and I had a c-section and everything was great and you know within the first few months um, we noticed that she was a little low tone a um, little floppy um, and you know you see a little floppy they couldn't yeah low not, tone just you know didn't have the control. wasn't as yeah wasn't quite as firm okay. you know as and couldn't hold things together you know when comparing to other um, other infants um, but you know being a physical therapist, I also know that there's a wide range of normal. Sure. And of course, you know, you never want to think that there's anything not right with your own child either. Sure. And um, That's right. are you talking about within the first couple of months? Yeah, we we noticed probably for sure by six months. I okay. mean, as as things um, went on, she was a little behind with her milestones, but she would always catch up. She was very bright and alert, and you know, so. You know, in that area, nothing, you know, triggered us. Nothing alarming. No, not yeah. at all. Um, there was, you know, some reflexes, some normal developmental reflexes that weren't quite integrating on time and things like that. So it was kind of like we were just watching things, sure. you know. Um, and then, you know, when she got to be about a year, you know, you kind of have like one of those little aha moments, you know. And, and she was, I remember vividly, she was pulling up on the, on the dishwasher and... The way that she did it, you know, and I, I'm sure that I'd seen it how many times before, but the way she did it, it's like, you know, she's not going to get this on her own. You know, she's she's compensating too much. She's using muscles that she shouldn't be using to You're have to pull You're recognizing this. Oh, yeah. Be, yeah. All of a sudden it became obvious to you. Yeah. And not that we hadn't seen some things before, but it just really hit me. So I, um, I got in touch with... Um, with a couple different um, people and friends that um, were pediatric PTs. And mm -hmm. so we went and um, they, they did a consult, a couple different ones, and you know, both thought she'll catch up. We just need to start some therapy and, and get her caught up and you know, no big deal kind sure. of thing. Um, but at the same time, um, we, we were talking to our pediatrician too and, and we said, you know, let's start some testing. You know, and he, he was actually a personal friend of ours too. And so, you know, he was really open to doing that. And um, because a lot of times they don't start testing until they're two at least. And she was only, you know, 15 months. So we started testing and, um, and that was kind Trying of- Trying to determine what's what really yeah, going Yeah, like w what is it? Sure. Um, and probably it took a good, you know, a year or more. Um, just testing and testing and um, nothing really was getting pulled together, you know, and, and really having medical background too. I mean, you, you kind of, I knew a lot of things that it wasn't for sure. Um, 
but yet there's so many other things you're ruling, out there. You're ruling it out, at least in your absolutely, thinking. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then um, we kept hearing Dr. Ashwal's name. He's a pediatric neurologist at Loma Linda. And, and so we said, you know what, let's just go outside of our insurance and go see him and see what he has to say. And, and really, that was a huge turning point in our lives. I mean, that was a big God moment a real, a real for us. A real breakthrough. And a, it was. You call it a what? It was a God moment. It was a God moment. It was. Okay, Absolutely. God intervening. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, he narrowed it down in an hour to three things. I mean, we found out more in an hour than we had in a year. Really? And, you know, when, when we did more research, you know, on the specifics, they actually all were, um, were different muscular dystrophies. Um, but, you know, when I did more research on the specific ones, I pretty much knew, you know. Now, Abby, you were telling me, how many different kinds are there? There's 43 different kinds, but... 43. But under that, there's a lot of different things underneath all those 43. A lot of little sub yeah. things, then, okay. Yeah. So you, you had it kind of narrowed down, and, yeah. and within two or three, you kind of thought this is yeah. what you had. Yeah. So how does this uh, make it, how does this hit you at this point? I mean, you got you got your little girl, and you got dreams and hopes, and and all of a sudden you're finding out that uh, she has this diagnosis. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because I would have thought that I, you know, earlier on than it was, I would have wanted to know more information, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm the kind of person that wants to know. Now. Yeah, what's, what's the deal and how can I deal with it? And um, the more information, the better. And you sure. can make better decisions. And, but, you know, <laughs> Looking again, back now. Yeah, and, and, you know, now I see how, how God was just so good to us and that he gave us, you know, little bits of information at a time. As you know, much as you so could that, handle absolutely, at that point. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and I think really, you know, that first, um, we found out kind of over a weekend. And, and I think there were 24 hours that were kind of rough, you know, and I Only remember. Only 24 hours, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to say, I mean, as I was looking up more specifics on her diagnosis, um, they gave her the diagnosis of congenital hypomyelinating neuropathy. Um, well, that's which a mouthful, right? It there. is. Um, which, you know, they classified as Dejerine Sotos. And since then, since more research has been done, they've, they've classified it under Charcot Marie Tooth disease. Which is a specific type of right. uh, muscular disease. A peripheral disorder. neuropathy, okay. right? Okay. But, you know, as I was looking up um, things, there really, that was eight years ago, and there wasn't that much information on it. And, you know, I remember very vividly just scouring things on the internet and, and then, you know, reading that it wasn't fatal. You know, and I can't even tell you. I mean, that was... Because there are some types that are... Many, many yeah. Many of them are yeah, fatal. Yeah, many. And you finally came to the conclusion that this one was not yeah. fatal. And, you know... So that was a great breakthrough. Huge relief, yeah. yeah. And as I read on, you know, there were, you know, not some of the, the greatest news. I mean, it said she could have a regression in her 20s or 30s. And I think that's really when fear kind of took over. Sure. You know, and that's where, you know, that unrest, you know, came and kind of a little panicky. And that's, you know, that was in that 24 hours. But I, I All mean, within I, that 24-hour period. Yeah, but, yeah. I, but I have to tell you, I mean, in, in that time, I mean, right after that, God just gave me this overwhelming peace, you know, the kind that passes all understanding, you know, that, that I don't think we really get until you're right in it. Until you're experiencing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and really, I didn't, I didn't hear an audible voice, but I really heard in my spirit that he was just saying, don't worry, Wendy, don't worry. This is my... She's my She's child. Mine. I love her more than you do, you know, which is really, you know, yeah. so hard for us to get, right. you know, and that, you know, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And so don't worry. We'll take I've got care it. Today. I got it covered, you know, and I may even come back before then. I mean, don't worry. Yeah. And, and I have to say, I mean, that was a huge turning point. And I'm so grateful that, that I only had 24 hours of not so nice, now, you know. Joel, as your husband, where yeah. was he in all of this? Pretty close. Really? To that too. I mean, that's yeah. amazing. I mean, yeah. within a 24-hour period of time, this overwhelming yeah. sense of peace and confidence that, yeah. you know, 
the Lord's in control here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So now you don't know any of this is going on because <laughs> you're pretty young at that point. So tell me what you're doing now because I think our listening audience needs to know that there's something very, very special about you. Well, I'm the National Goodwill Ambassador for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. The National? Wow. <laughs> Not the state, but the National. This is my third year, and the two years before that, I was the California State Goodwill Ambassador. Really? But they just asked me to do the fourth year. They did? I, have they ever asked anybody to do four years before? No. I knew it. <laughs> Something very special about you. Have you ever heard of Jerry Lewis? Yeah, he's, um, he's really nice, and now he's one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of your friends. Well, he used to be one of my favorite uh, actors years and years and years and years ago. Well, so what are some of the things you do now? You're in school. Do you have a hard time in school? Um, well, we're, like, learning-wise, no, but, like, during recess and PE and things like that, I'm behind and I have to s sit out. But I do as much as I can, and I keep trying. That's an important thing for our listening audience. You, you keep doing what? I keep trying. You keep trying. And mm -hmm. it's that spirit that kind of moves you ahead. So you say you get behind. I don't know that you really, what you're saying is you can't participate in all the things they do at recess. But what I try. You, but you try. <laughs> uh, give me an example. What kind of things do you try to do? Like um, whenever somebody's running, I'm always behind, left behind. Hey, wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so have you had these braces for quite a while? Well, these not, we've gone through lots of pairs and lots of different <laughs> so kinds of So these are new ones, but you've had braces for quite oh, a while. Oh, yeah. Then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what are the kind of things do you do during recess? Um, well, when it's this hot, just sit and... <laughs> yeah, well, it's hot. And that's right now it's been really, really hot. So what is your favorite classes in school? Um, I really like math. Do you? Yeah. You're good in math? Am I good in math? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I bet you, if you like it, I bet you are. <laughs> so tell me some of the things you, you're doing as being a national representative and a national ambassador. Well, I, I travel around the country. Around the country? And thanking sponsors for helping MDA. Because mm -hmm. some of them raise millions and millions of dollars for MDA. Wow. And um, I help raise awareness and say thank you and raise some more money. So you're just kind of a, you're, a, you're an ambassador for them, aren't you then? Mm -hmm. And were you in the, they just recently had a telethon. Did you have just anything to do with Labor that? This Labor Day. Labor Day. Were you, I, I thought I saw you on television. Was, was, I, was on, I was on that a, this year a few were times. You? I, this is the fifth year that we've been A part this. of it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So... So, do you go around and do you speak in behalf of... Uh... I, I speak and I sing and... Okay, and we're going to hear you sing in a little while later, but uh, what are some of the other things you do? I mean, as, do you, what do you do at school? Do you do anything uh, as an ambassador at school? Um, well, I try to tell my friends about... I try to help them understand about my disease and... Um, How do the other kids relate to it? Well, I'm not sure they completely understand, but I don't think they'll understand until they have something or until they Until they can, themselves have something? You mean really, they really understand it. Or until they relate yeah. to it. I mean, do they, is it awkward for them, for some of them, or do they, do they make fun, or? No, I don't, I don't think so. You don't I feel mean, like that? Because they like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure. Why wouldn't they like you? <laughs> All right. Why wouldn't they like you? So tell me some of the things that uh, you've been doing, Wendy. She's uh, in school and has a travel schedule. I mean, mm -hmm. how is this all working out? I mean, you know, um, that's another God thing, you know, because I think as we look back on our lives, too, you know, we see how God really just opened up um, the possibility of us doing this. I mean, with Joel's job and with my job, the flexibility in it, um, you know, with the school that she's at, um, you know, there's, there's kind of no accident how it all just lined up to do it. But it's so good it. to be able to look back and yeah. know that God's been opening oh, the doors. Absolutely. And, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's the case, you know, with her life 
from the very beginning. I mean, we had her anointed when she was just little, you know, and she was probably, it was probably right after she was diagnosed, so probably be about, about three years old. And, um, you know, we just, we prayed for healing, you know, and we prayed for every part of her, you know, that, um, you know, and that God would use her. And, um, and you know, he's, he just has been so faithful and is not disappointed. One okay, bit. now that's very important. He's been so faithful, has not disappointed. You prayed for healing. Mm -hmm. And how did God hear that prayer? Well, you know, we believe for healing every day. And, you know, I... Say it again. We believe for healing every day. Okay. You know, and, and I, um, I think sometimes God gives us instantaneous um, healings. And I think sometimes He heals over time. You know, and, um, you know, every milestone that she hits, everything, every new thing that she's able to do, we just thank God for it. That's a part of the healing. Absolutely. A part of the healing process. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's totally how we look at it, yeah. you know. And, you know, everything that's come along in the process of that. And, you know, I mean, there's that verse that says, you know, what the devil means to harm you with, God means for good, you know. And, you know, it could have devastated us. You know, and, 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 and it really, has, it has for some people, it has devastated them. Well, and I think too. I mean, for me, I know that there's things that are a lot worse. You know, I mean, I see it every day in my work. Yeah. You know, and you know, and we see it as we travel and we meet people with many different kinds of dystrophies, and um, you know, and people that we know, if we don't find a cure soon, they're going to die. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, I mean, for us, it's like we just don't feel like we have. A sad story, but we do feel like we have a big responsibility. Okay, and you have a big responsibility. You have a responsibility, and God is using you in, in wonderful, wonderful ways. Have you met some other kids? I mean, when you're around traveling, you have meet other kids that have uh, the same. Oh yeah, and a lot of my friends they have a disease that that's fatal. So we need to raise money quick because I don't. It doesn't matter to me if we find mine right away, but I just want my friends to be able to see how well, it is. Well, this last year, and we were in a down economy, but I heard you were, somebody was telling me, and it might have been you, how much money they raised during this last year. They raised um, $58.9 million. $58.9 million. And last year, what did they raise? You remember? I think a little over 60. It was a little over 60. So mm -hmm. even in a down economy, mm -hmm. that's a wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and, you know, you think of the, the hundreds of thousands of people that are yeah. being impacted. As this money comes in, then it goes for, for available research. And what I'm hearing you saying, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not as important that they find your particular cure, but they do find cures for other kids. Because if they find cure for one of them, it'll, they're all kind of connected in some way. So, so it'll. a breakthrough in one area may lead to a breakthrough in another mm -hmm. area. Okay. Now, how does some of the different diseases, there's 43, I didn't mm -hmm. realize there are 43. Mm -hmm. I mean, do, are there some different symptoms? Are, I mean, how does yeah. it inca oh, incapacitate yeah. some more than others? Or? Yeah, many are wheelchair bound. You know, many, um, you know, their breathing is affected and their, you know, autonomic systems affected. And, um, but, you know, but they all have to do with, um, muscle wasting, you know, so, so whether or not, you know, they can live in that state for, you know, for how long or if they have a rapid um, regression, you know, or, um, you know, or like Abby, you know, I mean, we, we see her getting stronger, you know, and so, you know, there's, there's a wide, there's a wide range, okay. but I think the reason that we're so passionate about it is that, you know, if we can, we can travel, I mean, we can go around and, so and raise awareness. So other than wearing your braces and being a little bit slow in the races, it sounds like she's doing remarkably yeah, well. Yeah, she is. Oh, yeah. She and there really are other is. activities you're taking part in at school, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I, I do as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. How, how about the water? Are you getting, able to get in the water at all? Oh, yeah. I love to swim. That's. I think that's... You swim? I love to swim. Really? I, I think I can... I swim so much better. Like, you wouldn't even know I had it. Really? In the water, it's... So you get a little buoyant in the water and you're able to swim. She's a good swim. swimmer. Very good swimmer. No kidding. I would mm -hmm. not have guessed. You can't... I don't think you can tell. Once you're Pretty in the good. water, you're just kind of like everybody else then. 
Okay. So tell me some of the things that you do. Um, well, when I'm not traveling or in school or stuff, I really love to read. So yeah. And so I actually just did a readathon for MDA because now I want. What, what is a readathon? Well, I take pledges for how many books I read. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> be <me>. kidding! <laughs> no, you, you're. Are you up in front of television then? Is that what a what a readathon is? Well, um, I've done this for the past two years. It's for, uh, I made up my own rules because, you know. Oh, that's good. I like to make <laughs> up my own. You make up your own rules. So it's for six weeks. All the books have to be over 100 pages because, you know, no picture books, no stuff that you can read in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Want to be fair, right? Uh, so it wasn't fair. So, so you make your own rules. They have to be over 100 pages. No, not a lot of pictures. Yeah, so. What else? Um, so last year, I don't think people knew how much I could read. So they pledged a lot. So guess how many books I read last year? Oh, you, are you, is it for a whole year that the merit? Just, the, just six weeks. For six weeks. Six weeks. And so you had a six-week period of time. And there And how many books did you read? Six weeks. Let me see. Six weeks. Well, if you read one a day, that would be 36 books. That's quite a bit right there. 35. You read 35 books? <laughs> a book a day. Almost. About. Yeah. This, almost a book a day. This, this year. Tell them how much oh, you raised last oh, year. Oh, last year I raised $5,385. Just from the readathon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the year before that I didn't, I didn't, we didn't even think of readathon. But, and then I just raised $320. But the first year. The first year. Yeah. But this year, this year I read 50 books. So is it already over? This is the this year, this summer. Yeah, so this summer you read in six weeks? Mm-hmm. All over 100 pages. And all of them were over 100 pages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of stories, what kind of books do you read? Um, anything. I like mystery, adventure. <laughs> mis mystery and adventure. How about any biographies? Um, no, not really. 50 books, that's a lot of books. Yeah, I had trouble finding them. <laughs> I can imagine. Trying to find books that are, are not 200 pages, but they're less well, than Oh, no, no. Some of them were, I bet the average was about 175. Mm -hmm. 175 pages? Just an average. Because there were some that were like 101 pages, and there are some that were like 300 and something well, pages. Well, good for you. So I raised, get ready. This, I'm it's ready. It's going to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. $20,555. What? For the reading of the 50 books? Uh-huh. Congratulations. I need to shake your hand on that one. Man, <laughs> that is amazing. Thanks. So math is your favorite subject, but mm -hmm. I can see reading is, uh, it's got to be a I close second. I love to read. Yeah. I love, I love to sing, read, swim, all that kind of stuff. How about writing? Are you doing any writing yet? Um, Just in, me too. Wow, I see our time has already slipped by here. We've got a song we're going to have you sing. Okay. And I think we better sing right now. I had no idea the time had slipped by. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to sing a song called For Good, and it's from my favorite play, Wicked. Okay.
a stream that meets a boulder Halfway through the wood Who can say if I've been changed for the better Because I knew you I have been changed for good We will never meet again in this lifetime So let me say before we part So much of me is made from what I learned from you You'll be with me like a handprint on my heart and now whatever way our stories end I know you have rewritten mine by being my friend Like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind off the sea Like a seed dropped by a sky bird in the distant wood who can say if I've been changed for the better? I do believe I have been changed for the better Because I knew you Because I knew you Because I knew you I have been changed You did a great job. Thanks. Thank you. You, you engaged me and I forgot all about the time. Great job. Thank you. Five, I can't believe 50 books. <laughs>